Knowing how to debug a test is a fundamental skill to have in your testing career. In this video, I'm going to show you how to debug a failed test and much more. Welcome to Automate Now. I'm Marco Cruz. Let's dive in. To begin, we're going to take another look at the test that we wrote in the last video. This one here that says test set cookie. So far, you have seen me run tests by clicking on this arrow right here. And normally I would either click on this one that says run and then the name of the test or this one that says debug and then the name of the test. So when I use run, this one here, we're going to run the test without stopping. Basically, there won't be any debugging going on. Every time that we want to debug the test, then we use this button right here. Next, I want to talk about breakpoints. So let's say that we want to stop a program execution at this line right here, 239, all right? So before we continue running the program, we want to see what happens at line 239. I would click on this area right here, this blank area next to the line number. Then you see this red dot up here. This is what the breakpoint is. It will halt program execution at this line when we run the program in debug mode, this right here. Now let's see what it's like when we run this program in debug mode. I'm going to click here and then select debug. You're going to see that the program will run, the test will start, and then it will stop execution at this line right here, 239. So now the program is running. And now you saw the window opened up, browser window opened up, and then it stopped and it came back to this window right here, which is our IDE. We see that it stopped right at this line. It's highlighting the line where it has stopped. All right. So we're stopping at line 239. And if you see here on this area, it's now showing this tab, which is debug debugger. All right, so we have the debugger tab and then the console tab. Normally, you're going to see this one that says console. Right now, we're looking at debugger because we are debugging this test. All right. So next, what you're going to take a look at is these buttons right here. Okay. So the first one right here says step over. The step over means that we want to execute the current line of code. We're just going to step over this line and go to the next line. So let's see what happens when we do that. In this line right here, we're creating an object, a string, cookie name. So we should expect that cookie name to appear in this area that says variables here. So let's go ahead and click this and notice that now we have a new variable called cookie name. This is the one we just created over here, right? And this variable has this value assigned to it, chocolate chip, which is what we used over here. You're also going to see that this debugger is showing you what is happening to these variables. So on this right hand side over here, to the right of this semicolon, you're going to see the name of the variable along with its value right here. Okay, so now we have arrived at this next item right here. It says set cookie. Now we're going to take a look at this button now. This one says step into. All right, so we did step over, which took us from line 239 over to line 240. Now this step into is the one that you're going to use to dive into anything that is going on here. So in this case, we're calling a method called set cookie. So instead of using the step over to move over to line 241, we're going to use step into to go inside of this method, this set cookie method. So let's see what happens when we click step into. Notice that now we went from class sandbox test over to the base page class. And now we're looking at this set cookie method. This is the line number that is highlighted. We're currently on line 249 of the set cookie method. We see that this method takes two parameters, this string name and then string value. And over here, you can see what value has been assigned to each one of these. So name has the value of chocolate chip and value has the value of one, two, three. And this is coming from the test that we are running because you can see here, this is the parameters that we are passing in. We're passing in this cookie name which was defined in line 239. And then we're passing this value of one, two, three. That's why you see that here. And then now I'm just going to step over these lines because this one is just going to create this cookie right here object. And then we're going to go over here to the driver that manages that add cookie. So let's go ahead and click on step over to move over these lines, right? So we have reached the end of this method. I'm going to step over one more time. Now we have returned back to our test where this sandbox test class is. And this has been executed. We executed line 240. Now we have arrived at line 241, which is basically creating a cookie. And we give it in the name, my cookie. And this one says 
get cookie right i'm just going to step over this line right now i'm not going to go into this to see what is going on i'm just going to step over this and now we see that my cookie has this information next to it now this is the information that this has we see chocolate chip equal to one two three so this is the cookie and this is its value we also see the path and the domain here and lastly we have arrived at this line right here 242 and this is making an assertion we're checking that the name of this cookie matches the cookie name right this cookie name is coming from list line 239 so we're making sure that whatever we get back from this method get name is going to match chocolate chip if it does not match then we're going to present this error right here so let's just go ahead and finish the execution of this test to continue execution of the test at any time we can click this button right here. This says resume program. When you click this button, it's gonna finish execution of the test or it's going to stop at the next breakpoint. In our case, we only have one breakpoint and we already passed it. So it's just gonna finish executing the test. So let's click this and notice that the test has finished. We are in the debugger tab, so we don't see much going on here. But if we click on the console here, you're going to see the information that the test passed because you see the green check mark right here. Now I showed you about these two guys right here, the step over and step into. Let's take a look at some of these other ones here. We have one that says four step into and this one that says step out. I'm going to show you this one, it says step out, which is the most common one. So I'm going to rerun the test and this time I'm going to put a breakpoint at line 240. I'm going to put a breakpoint here and to remove a breakpoint, you just click on it once again. So I'm going to click on it again. So let's go ahead and rerun this test by running it on debug mode. And just a reminder, we can run the test from this area right here, or we can also click these buttons over here. This will run the test ignoring breakpoints, and this will run the test while stopping at the breakpoints in debug mode. So let's go ahead and click this. Okay, so notice that this time we stop at line 240. And again, I'm going to step into this line to see what's going on in this method called set cookie. So I'm going to click on this right here. And now we have stepped into this method. Now we could resume program execution by clicking on this button. But instead of that, I'm going to show you what happens when I step out of this method by using this button right here, step out. And what this is going to do is that it's going to execute whatever's in this method and then get out of the method. So let's go ahead and click it. And notice that it went back to the original test right here. So we finished executing whatever was inside of this method and it came back here. At any point, you can also stop the test by clicking on this red button right here. Next, I want to show you what happens when this test fails. So let's go ahead and in here, in this line 241, I'm going to use a different cookie name right here than the one that, it, that we expect to find. So I'm going to remove this and I'm going to say bad cookie. So let's see what happens when we run this test. This time, I'm just going to run the test normally without using debug mode. And we see here that the test failed right and here we see some information and over here you're going to see this section you're always going to get this section anytime a test fails and this is what is referred to as a stack trace right a stack trace tells you what happened when the test failed okay so if we look at this line right here this very first line right this tells you where this is coming from in this case it's coming from test ng right so this this error is coming from test ng this error also is coming from test ng. In fact, all of these four are coming from test ng, as you can see here, all right? The one that we are concerned with is this one right here, right? Because this is coming from io.automainow.test. So this is our package. So io.automainow is this, this package right here, io.automainow. Then you see .tests, and this is referring to the test folder. So if we scroll down here, we're going to see this test folder right here and then he's saying dot sandbox tests and this is the name of the class so this package right here in fact is referring to this package right here io that now that tests and then sandbox tests is the name of the class right here sandbox tests and then you see test set cookie and this is the method that we're trying to execute this is the name of the, the test that we are executing all right and then you see in brackets or in parentheses you're going to see sandbox tests that Java and then colon 242. This 242 is referring to the line number where the test failed. So if I click on this, it's going to take me exactly to where the test failed, this line right here, okay? So let's see what the failure says. It says, no pointer exception. 
cannot invoke right get cookie name because my cookie is null now my cookie is referring to this right here right my cookie we're saying my cookie dot get name but where is my cookie coming from my cookie is coming from this line right here 241 all right this is where we create this cookie object so we're going to find out what's wrong with this test we already know what's wrong with the test because we changed the name of the cookie this cookie does not exist but if we were to debug this test without knowing what's wrong with it we would put a breakpoint right here to see what this is getting assigned all right if we look at the application right now let's go to the website I'm going to hit F12 and then we're going to go to the application tab and we're going to select cookies and go to automate now. If we see here, there are two cookies, right? Chocolate chip and we have this other one, WPDM underscore client. These are the only two cookies that are found here on this website. If we go back to the application here, if we go back to the code, we see that we're trying to look for this one, this name of this cookie, but it's not there. That's why we're getting this null pointer exception. We cannot try to get the name of a cookie that does not exist. That's why this is coming back as null. So let's go ahead and debug this program by putting a breakpoint right here. And I'm going to re rerun this test in debug mode. Okay, so now we have hit the breakpoint. And here we're going to see what happens when we step over this line. We're going to see what happens to this my cookie. All right, so let's click on this right here to step over. And then we see my cookie is equal to null. So we were able to verify that this right here is not getting, this value is not getting set. That's what the issue is. So we would have to go back to the program or to the application and make sure that we're using a, a valid cookie name. That's how we would solve this. The last button that I wanted to show you is this one right here. This one says show execution point, All right? So at any time you may click on this button and it's going to show you where the program is executing at. And that is because sometimes you may click somewhere else in the program. So for example, we could move the mouse cursor over here and then we may forget where we were at. By clicking on this right here, it's going to take the cursor back down to here. See the line number that we're executing. I went ahead and stopped this test. So next I want to show you one last thing. So in this case, I'm going to leave the breakpoint right at this line, right? And I'm going to rerun this test in debug mode. Okay, so once again, we hit the breakpoint here. We still have a bad test because this cookie does not exist. So one other thing I want to show you is what happens when we right click here, right? We have hit this breakpoint. And when you right click on this breakpoint, or this area that is being executed, we're going to see different options that we can run. And one very useful one is this one that says evaluate expression, right? When we click on this, right? Let's say that you want to evaluate what happens when you run this test right here. We want to see what happens when this line of code gets executed, all right? But here we can evaluate it before we hit the step over button right here, okay? So in this case, we're going to evaluate get cookie with this right here. So I'm going to click evaluate and notice that this says return is null. So now I can go back to the program and if I look at the cookies, these are the cookies that we have right here, okay? So I could enter any of these cookie names. So let's grab this cookie name right here. Let's copy this and go back to the code. And here, let's just put this right here. Okay, let's paste it. And let's evaluate this once again. And notice that this time we do get a good result because we have the cookie name and we have a cookie value. All right. So again, we can grab another cookie name right here. Copy. And then paste it here. And reevaluate this. And there you have it. So, this is another way to debug your test. You could try different values right here to see how the program would behave if you ran the program with that given value. And this has been a brief introduction of how debugging works in your programs. If you have any questions about it, please leave them in the comment section. Thank you so much, and see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.